busy weekend. Uh, the church celebrates Pentecost and out in the world we celebrate this as Memorial Day weekend. This is not a day of celebrating for us, but this is a day of saying thank you to Lisa Tara, and we'll have uh, some more during the service and some coffee and some goodies after the service. 
Fifty days after Easter, we celebrate the Holy Spirit as God's presence within and among us. As the day of Pentecost, I see some of you have worn your Pentecost red. I think Thomas even has some Pentecost shoes. Look out for that when you see him directing. Welcome also to the folks who are worshiping on Zoom. We know that we are one body and so that we worship in different places, but we still continue to worship the one God. So welcome folks on our Facebook Live and Zoom. Do we have folks here who have that served in our armed services, in our military? Anybody served? Yep. Well, let's offer a prayer for all of those um, in honor who have served uh, and given their lives for this country. Let us pray. O oh God of life, you have seen generations who have died through sacrifice, war, and courage. You have comforted generations who mourned and grieved. Gather us in your embrace and surround us with your compassion. As we remember those who have died in past wars and conflicts, help us to remember that you were there when the mountains were formed. You were there to soothe our grief and breathe hope into the hopeless. You are with us still. We give you thanks for life in Jesus and pray that our lives may be reflections of his love. Amen. And we thank all of those who have served. My name is Karen Olisted. I am a retired pastor in Denver, and I've been helping out here for Pastor Margo. She, we decided last week they were about halfway through their uh, sabbatical time, and so uh, we pray that uh, they will continue to find refreshment and renewal, just as this congregation has activities to um, talk about renewal um, on June 16th and 18th. Sherry Peterson will be coming in at the end of the service to help remind us about that, that opportunity. At this time, any other announcements right away? No, okay. At this time, we will continue with our Thanksgiving for baptism. I invite you to stand and face the thought. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Alleluia. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams, Honor to you for waters that wash us, clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you in the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. We continue with our opening hymn, Every Time I Feel the Spirit, it's on our screen.
pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people, sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Acts, the second chapter. Listen for the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, and we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. I need the children to come forward for the children's message. Just sit here right on the floor in a circle there, my bear. Good morning. My name is Pastor Karen, and I'm helping out for Pastor Margot. She and her husband are on um, kind of a special trip, and they're He's going to be coming back in a few weeks, so I'm helping out for that. Today we call this day Pentecost, and we, you're going to hear, just heard about wind and breath. I want you to put your hand up and breathe onto your hand. Now, hold it back 
little bit. Can you see that breath coming out of your hand? Well, so if I breathe onto this paper, well, you can see what it, you can see what my breath does, can't you? You're expanding up straight. My breath, something happened, right? Just like when we're outside and we look at the trees and the leaves are blowing all around. We can't, yep, that's right. We can't see the wind. We can't see the wind, but we can see what the wind does. It makes those leaves move all around. Well, that's what we heard today, that there was a wind that came into the room where um, Jesus' friends were sitting, and this wind breathed into all of these disciples and made it possible for them to go out and tell other people about Jesus. There were people who had different languages, and so they were able to speak all these different languages, but what they did speak, they spoke about and told them about God's son, Jesus, and how much Jesus loves everybody. And so we celebrate that as the, the day, actually, we call this the birthday of the church, because bringing all of those disciples in one room and filling them with that wind, that spirit, is what helped form the church. And so from a way long time ago, way, 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 even before your grandparents, there were people who told um, other people about God's love. Let's thank God for that. Dear God, thank you for the world so much that you sent other people, disciples and friends, to tell the world about your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Jesus, amen. amen. Now we have some buckets here for our change for change. And this month, this is the last Sunday um, for our change going to our veterans services. Is the other one okay? You want the, you want the pink one? That's great. Let's go, and we're going to have people put some money in your bucket. We give thanks for your generosity to support our veteran services. They have their hand up. You can go with the bucket. To John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, 
and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you, have forgive, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise <laughs> Thirty years ago, I lived <clears throat> as a volunteer in Papua New Guinea, an island nation just north of Australia. The orientation book reported that there were at least 350 known languages in this country of seven million people. The landscape was filled with valleys and mountains and rainforests, which isolated each clan or tribe from another. Once missionaries settled into their land, though, they developed a commerce language they could all understand called Pidgin English. While their own one talk or tribal language was still used in the home, Pidgin English became the language of the people. An outcome of this more universal language was cohesion as a country. They were able to develop government and schools and churches, they became a people, not a confederation of 350 tribes. On this Pentecost Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus' disciples became a people, not just a band of individual followers. This was not just any old people. Our presiding Bishop Eaton once called this group of disciples which of course now includes us, spirit people. Our two readings include accounts of how the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples to be spirit people. In the Acts reading, divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were able to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Besides, though, the ability to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them, they were sent to prophesy around the Mediterranean Sea with a universal language, the language of God, made possible by the Spirit. A vocabulary that told the story of God's love through Jesus Christ. This language created a community, the body of Christ now in the world. Some folks believe the miracle was that the disciples could speak the many languages and the people understood. But another miracle is that they spoke the language of God to others. Well, now most preachers think we need to explain this Holy Spirit on this day. Many theologians suggest, though, that we trust the Spirit, even if we are not able to understand it. Bible writers have used descriptors to help identify how the Spirit works. So is it a dove, a violent wind, tongues of fire, a gentle breeze? even though we cannot scientifically see the spirit we look to the effect of it the result of the spirit blowing in with and through us for example each disciple was given abilities to learn and speak languages that weren't necessarily their own we heard a couple of weeks ago in John's gospel, the spirit is our advocate, one who stands with us. It is also the comforter, holding us as we grieve or cry out in sickness. My theology professor referred to the spirit as the bond of love that unites the father and the son, and then us to them. 
This morning, Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit on the disciples, proclaiming the forgiveness of sins. This breath filled them with power to continue Jesus's work since he was no longer on earth. However we experience the Holy Spirit, we profess the unity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit every Sunday in our creeds. We pray that the Spirit will stir in us the gifts already given to us. If you can imagine breathing on an ember at a campfire, the spark is there. The breath or the wind, though, activates and enhances the fire to be used for heat or cooking or protection. We usually only talk about the work of the Spirit in the church. I get that. We don't usually talk about the Holy Spirit at baseball games. These are not conversations we have in our ordinary, everyday lives. But the language of God that is breathed into us is one that we have been given to use in our everyday lives. In our gospel reading, Jesus sent the disciples out to speak it. They didn't have a choice. <laughs> Just as the Father sent me, I send you, Jesus said. In baptism, we have been given the words to say and the commission to go in peace, to tell others about the Lord. And one word in God's language is, that's called prophesy. If you have ever learned a new language, you know that you don't start with a doctoral dissertation. My pigeon workbook started with, hello, and my name is. The longer I stayed in the country, the more in-depth were the conversations with children and adults. If you continue to use a language, you spend the rest of your life growing in confidence to communicate with others. As the disciples continued their mission, they became fluent in the language of God. Their workbook included the prophets the Psalms, the Torah, the stories of their descendants, and soon their own story of Jesus. Their relationship with Jesus placed their story into God's story, the story of liberation from sin, abundance in grace, love for each other every day. Emboldened by the Spirit, each community welcomed the disciples and heard their message. Each community then formed into a congregation, united to the rest of God's, God's spirit people. These then were the congregations that Paul and Peter visited and wrote letters to. Because the disciples were faithful in their mission to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, we are able to hear God's language spoken today. We have each become spirit people in the waters of baptism, united to the whole rest of the body of Christ. Our parents brought us to worship, to Sunday school, to confirmation class. We have learned how to live as a people through worship and service to others. Our workbook has included the Old and New Testament, Luther's Catechism, and several hymnals filled with poetry and music. We have grown more confident in God's language by hearing and sharing stories of God's grace, mercy, and love. We have been fed with this meal, and then we are sent out to tell others about the God who loves all of creation. We have been sent out to prophesy. In our storytelling, we use a language that our co-workers, our family members, and our friends can understand. Our young people are fluent in technology speak. And while that language seems miraculous to some of us who are technologically challenged, we give thanks that they have new and creative tools to spread God's message of inclusion, abundance, and love. This might sound exciting to some, 
and frightening to others. <laughs> we are reminded, though, that since we are filled with the Holy Spirit, it is God's work we are set to do, and we are given all we need to be in mission. As we've been hearing in John's gospel these last couple of weeks, we are never left alone. We are led to God's mission by the Spirit, and we do the work as a member of the body with many members and gifts. There is no one set plan. Wherever we are in our lives, at school or work, vacation, volunteering, maybe even disagreeing around the dining room, we are to proclaim the love of God through Jesus Christ. Do we feel comfortable with God's language immediately? Well, not usually. <laughs> we start as babies sharing God's love in our families and little ones who collect money for the Veterans Service Corps. Then as we see other believers in action, when we see those buckets filled with coins, and when we actually use the tools of God's language, we become more and more confident that our message is God's message. There will be some who are amazed, others will be perplexed, and still others will sneer. They are drunk with new wine. Or, oh, come on, you don't have to worship on Sundays. But when we gather each week with other believers, we are nourished. And we grow in our understanding of God's love and God's language. So what are some of the vocabulary words in God's language? In the gospel reading, Jesus said, peace. Peace be with you. This is the peace of God that passes our human understanding. It is the peace, the shalom, the wholeness, the fulfillment of God's presence in our lives. Forgiveness is another word we hear today. We know God's forgiveness, which we hear each week in our worship. But we also know God's forgiveness every time our spouse or our parent or a neighbor says, I forgive you. Or when we forgive others. Jesus told many people along the way, be healed. Jars overflowed. Hungry hearts were satisfied. Twelve baskets of bread and fish were collected. God's language does not include the word scarcity, but abundance. Crowds who walked with Jesus heard the word repent, a word of good news to set our lives free of the guilt and shame of our sin. This is the language of God who loves us beyond our comprehension. Though we call God great and omnipotent, we touch and taste the intimacy of God's word through Jesus. Remember, this is my body given for you. Every time you hear a lesson read in worship or in your own Bible study, I invite you to listen to the vocabulary of God's holy, life-changing, ever-present, ever-faithful language. And then try out that word as you work and live together as God's people. The world will not always understand this language. Look at our social media and political culture. God's message of forgiveness and peace is rarely flashed across Facebook accounts or heard from bullies who seek to intimidate our young people. But the world is dying to hear God's message, God's language. We learn and communicate this language together and then take it out into every setting we face, trusting the Spirit will give us the words, the confidence, and the power to tell others God loves the whole world, no exceptions. Amen. We continue with the Spirit of Gentleness.
may be seated. Can I call Lisa forward? And Al and others who are planning to speak. Come on, you can break the here in the front. <laughs> Lisa, as you lead this community in your role as a companist, we wish our gratitude and bid you farewell. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the life of light. And in our reading from Corinthians, Paul writes, there are varieties of gifts. But the same spirit and their varieties of services, but the same Lord. And their varieties of activities, it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And you have brought many gifts to this congregation. And we thank the Lord that it was weird choice to welcome you into the mission we share as the people of God. In this community, you have come to know and to share God's loving purpose for you and for all creation. God has blessed you in this congregation, and God has blessed us with you. Lisa, as a musician and a pastor, I want to acknowledge before this group how much the musician keeps the flow of the service moving. You have to be ready for anything. <laughs> you also have to be one step ahead of where we are in the service so that the transition will be smooth. Although I have only witnessed your musicianship a short time, I have appreciated how you are fully in the service so that we can worship without fits and starts. Your new situation will bring you new opportunities to lead worship in a very musical, professional, and faithful way. All right, I'm going to start my portion of your Godspeed by discussing some numbers that have represented you in your time here at the Hills. Overall, you have shared your gifts and talents for the Hills for 27 years. You have seen us grow from a small congregation where people met in houses, to Smoky Hill High School, to our own building, and adding our second building with choir music, and even playing and recording in your own home during COVID, meaning you played for our congregation in at least five different venues. You have served under seven pastors, Pastor Tom Wayne Rainquist, Pastor Emily Carden, Pastor Carrie Baum, Pastor Jet, Pastor Dan Roman, Pastor Margo, and Pastor Karen. You have played for three choir directors, including Chris Larson, Shannon Lemon Elrod and myself. Speaking of number three, you have shared three dogs with our congregation. <laughs> Sophie, our original church poodle, Gertie, your lovable bulldog, and now Tilly, our new church poodle, which will now be a poodle for another congregation. You have played for over 80 current and former choir members. Now to some more relevant numbers. Countless. The number of musical selections you have shared with our congregation. Immeasurable number for the money that you are worth. <laughs> Seven years putting up with my shenanigans. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, a number I won't mention, but I hear it's 39. So if I'm doing my math correctly, that means you've been playing with us since you were on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> because it isn't just her final day, it is also Ms. Lisa's birthday.
The choir and I have gotten these gifts for you so that you may go to have a good meal with your family, who we know is very important, and it includes a place where Tilly can eat as well. As well as this flag, as we thank you for sharing your immense gifts and talents with us for so many years. God, we give you thanks for the work and witness of your servant, Lisa, who has enriched this community and shared her gifts with us. Now bless and preserve her at this time of transition. Day by day, guide her and give her what is needed in the clear vision of that which you are calling her. Your presence known in her faith journey, that she may travel with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lisa, as you have been a blessing to us, so now we send you to be a blessing to others. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Be seated. And we do invite you for more greetings following the service. Uh, more greetings and well wishes and hugs and tears and laughter and stories uh, um, following the service in our fellowship hall. Or the Right there. Yeah. <laughs> and honestly, I would love to pray for her so she could enjoy this, but know that the Jesus has for many people while she has been here and she's tired, so I can send her on her way. Thank you. 
we didn't leave any space for words from you. Do you want to say a few words? We rise now to profess our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. <clears throat> Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O God. Restoring God, wind and flame bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for those who work with wind energy, for migratory birds, for protection for lands facing destructive fire, for forestry managers and firefighters. Renew the face of the earth. Hear us, O God. Ever-present God, your spirit embraces all. Send your spirit of understanding to immigrants, refugees, and any experiencing language barriers. Bless the work of translators, English as a second language teachers, ambassadors, and international peace organizations. Safely guide those fleeing war and danger. Hear us, O God. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who seek your comfort, especially Corey and his family, Pastor Terry, Pastor Caitlin, Pastor Andrea, Pastor Mark, Kirsten, Jill, Teresa, Jack, Mandy, the Smith family, Bob, Janae, Yvonne, Randy, Carol, Mike, Cheryl, Andrew, Diane, the Wyatt family, the Brown family, Mary, Chris, Tom, Lois, and others we name before you now, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Protecting God, you surround us with your love and peace. Provide safe travels for Pastor Margo and Dan as they continue to experience your presence in the living waters of this sabbatical. Hear us, O God. Generous gift, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and this congregation. Hear us, O oh God. 
Life giving God, we give thanks for all who have died to new life in you. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. I encourage you to give a sign of peace to one another.
This is Christ's table. The Lutherans believe that at this meal we receive the forgiveness of our sins and then we are sent out into the world to tell others about God's love. If you are at home celebrating worship with us, we invite you to take a piece of bread or a cracker and wine or grape juice. And together we will hear the words, this is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. Please rise. We pray together, generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join now in praying the Lord's prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The ushers will help guide us forward. For those here, the light colored juice is the juice, and the red is the one. All are welcome.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated for the announcements. All right, please join us very quickly after our services today to help celebrate Ms. Lisa for her past 27 years. Also join us next week as we have our semi-annual meeting after the service starting at 11.15 where we we'll would like to new council members. And Ms. Sherry, I'm going to hand it over to you. I want to make sure nobody's asleep out there. Um, I I know some of you know me, some of you. Don't. I'm Sherry Peterson, um, and I'd love to get to know you better if you don't know me. So join me in the reception. Um, I want to invite you to just pause and take a few breaths and take in this moment of special fullness. Thank you. What a special morning. There's so much that we're holding today. Lisa, Pentecost, Memorial Day. Maybe you have graduates in your life. There's a lot going on. And we need to practice that pause. I'm here this morning to invite you to join us for the water weekend coming up on June 16th, 17th, and 18th. Maybe you only have time to join Friday evening, or maybe you can only make it to worship on Sunday, but I hope to see you that weekend at some point. Consider it your mini sabbatical. Pastor Margo is hopefully enjoying journeying in her sabbatical time right now, and we figured she's a little over halfway on that journey. Um, the opportunity for her to do that is not just for her, but it's also for us, and we need to take some time to journey with her. And that's what the Water Weekend is for. So I encourage you. I know several have already shared with me they can't be with us in attendance. Um, I encourage you to take some time during her sabbatical, your sabbatical, to enter into some pause, enter into some connection, um, reconnection with yourself, reconnection with your congregation, reconnection with the spirit. Where is it guiding you? Where is it taking you right now? Uh, we'll take some time on that Saturday, the 17th, to pause and enter into some things that we may need. 
right now for ourselves, whether it's relaxation, meditation, contemplation, maybe it's play, maybe it's reconnecting with our creative side. We're going to provide space for those and guidance during that if you're not sure where to go or what to do. Um, Sunday morning, I'm going to have a, a nature connection practice if you um, join me here before service um, at nine and we'll enter into something maybe outside your comfort zone, maybe something new for you and hopefully something that you can take with you um, to do later on as well as you continue those practices. That's all I have this morning, but join me. Could you just remind us if there's a cost? For me? This is a free event. Yes, it is included in the grant that received for pastor sabbatical so it is covered the cost is co covered so um, no no expense just your time and your commitment to connect with yourself so thank you for that all right i'm happy to answer any other questions or anything but get on with the party let us rise the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Our sending him sends us forth. <laughs>